What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, we're back with another 2-in-1 WWE Elite figure review, and today's review is on the WWE Elite Series 106 Chad Gable and Paul Bearer figures. Now, these are two of the figures I was most looking forward to in the entire set. I think that you're looking at two of the better figures in the set, and of course, we are going to do a My Damn Thoughts episode. We're going to break down all the details later on in the week, and we're going to cover all of these figures, rank the set, all those things. But today, we are taking a closer look and in-depth look at the Elite 106 Chad Gable and Paul Bearer, two figures. I'm very much looking forward to here. Now we finally have our Alpha Academy Chad Gable looking pretty damn good right here. Great looking head sculpt on the guy. No longer Shorty G, thank Christ. Got the shoe shirt on there. He's looking pretty good in the packaging, of course. You have the little bio read. You got all your info and all that crap. We have the series down there, of course. And, you know, all the series info on the side, the side profile of the guy. And then we do have Big Bad Paul Bear over here looking pretty good, I might say. We got a brand new body mold on this guy, which looks great. Looking pretty good in the head sculpt department. I have I haven't tracked down the chase just yet, but I definitely will be doing so. But you have the front viewing window. You got Paul Bear there, Paul Bear's name, the series number. Nice shot of the character there on the side. And then on the back, you have another great shot of the character there in the ring. And then, of course, rest in peace to the legend. Hall of Fame inductee and all the good stuff, man. But if you guys would like to grab these figures, you already like what you see. You can go over to Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% when shopping over there. And get in on the Cyber Monday 3.0 sale. And get in all your stuff before Christmas time. Now, this is also a time to announce. This is is going to be the last elite wave that I include in my top 10 elites of the year. So will either of these guys make it in that top 10? We will have to see. I do plan on posting a top 10 video each Saturday from here on out to the end of the year. So that should be fun to look forward to between the elites of the year, the ultimates, the AEW figures of the year, all the different stuff. But let's shut the hell up, crack these guys out of the packaging and see if they are indeed worth a damn. Let's dive into these figures and put them on the rotating base. So here's Paul Bearer and Chad Gable out of the packaging, man. Really enjoying these. I think these are two of the most underrated in the set. I just think I'm having a lot of fun with these guys, posing them around, doing all the different stuff with these guys. These are pretty damn good football figures so far. In the review, we're early on in it, and I'm excited for them, man. So that's always a great sign when pointing to new figures and stuff like that. So this is good. This is definitely a good start for me here. But this Chad Gable, I think it was certainly a needed upgrade. I'm glad that we finally have this in the collection. And I think this addition of Paul Bearer is also very much needed. I think, you know, it's been a while since we've got one of his figures. I like the new added body parts and like newly sculpted things that we have going on with Paul Bear. So this should be a fun one, man. Let's buckle the hell up. Let's dive into Chad Gable's accessories and Chad Gable, and then we'll run it back to take a closer look at Paul Bear's accessories and Paul Bear. All right, guys, so getting into Chad Gable's accessories, starting out first, we do have cloth goods, which is always a bonus. And one thing that's wild is this is actually, I'm pretty sure this is exact same shirt mold as the Uso shirt. Actually, no, it's not. It's not. It's cut differently. Like the, actually, like the way this angles right here is a little bit different. So they did like custom cut this shirt, but it has the Alpha Academy logo. It says Shoosh, obviously. That's like the Chad Gable Alpha Academy gimmick right now or whatever you want to say. He's got the Velcro on the back right there, which is nice. Not the, you know, velcro -less shirt that we've seen in the past, but very cloth goods ridden. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but it looks good on the figure. It looks good on the figure, as you guys saw, and it's cloth goods, so I'm always for this. Don't really have issues with cloth goods, man. If it has Velcro or not, I will take this all day over rubber accessories. Not even a damn debate, Brad. Now, outside of that, we do get interchangeable hands with our Chad Gable. Starting out first, we have the world going around mic holding or weapon wielding style hands. We actually get pointer fingers, which is awesome. So you can point at people and tell them to shut the hell up. Or your shooshing style hands, right? So you can cover your lip and tell people to shoosh. And then we do have the peace hands or the, you know, the scissor me daddy hands. Or, I mean, these could be used for a lot of stuff. But typically, it would be the peace sign, rock, paper, scissors, you know, the let's rock, let's rock today. If anybody gets that reference. You can do a lot of stuff with the with the deuces right here. All right, guys, so getting into Chad Gable, really like this head sculpt. You know, it's kind of a difference of the last head sculpt, which we saw on his Shorty G Basic, which we're going to take a look at in the comparison shot of the video, of course. But I really like this head sculpt a lot. I like the smiling head sculpt. I think it's a really, I don't know, it just makes me feel good, man. I feel like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Got a little something special going on there, young man. But I like the hair sculpt. I think it looks really good. It looks a lot like Chad Gable, in my opinion, you know, especially when he's smiling, so I think this works really, really good. I honestly feel like Chad Gable, as good as he is now, I feel like he was probably 10 or 15 years too late. Like, can you imagine Chad Gable in the early 2000s putting on bangers on SmackDown, son? Oh my god in heaven. Imagine him and Team Angle. I know Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin were elite, but I don't know, man. I, I, I just think Chad Gable would have been so electric. Just a freak of nature anyway. Really like this head sculpt. Really like the same singlet torso that we've seen on his figures in the past. There's nothing going on, but I do like this design. It's kind of this 
gold, black, and blue going on. It looks a lot like the real gear, so that's good. You always like to have that deco match. Got the pinless arms in there, which are great. White wrist tape. Really nice stuff going on here. All the pinless stuff going on. Design on the back. He does have a little bit of paint right here on the elbow or the upper arm, which is kind of weird, but uh, I could get that off no problem. No, no shot there, but going down the trunks of the singlet, looking good here. Very seamless on the thigh cut right there, which is always a very nice gesture. I always like the way that looks right there. Very aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And he does have pinless legs, which are very tight, but the black tape underneath the knee pads, and he's got his knee pads design, and he does have his Sami Zayn style boots with the blue socks coming above. Now, this is something that's dumb. This is how Sami Zayn's boots should be. This is the same, like, height that it should be, but you're gonna see in our Sami Zayn Elite 106 review that they make his boots way too damn tall, which we're gonna get into, but, I mean, that's neither here or there, but this is how Sami Zayn's boots should be, but we're talking about Chad Gable here today, and I think this figure's a beast, man. I know the legs are super tight. I, as good as these figures are, like, modern day figures are, the pinless joints are super annoying to me. I mean, that's just, I don't care how aesthetically pleasing they are. When I feel like the figure's gonna snap in half or that the leg's too, too tight or the arms are too tight. Like, the arms I don't really have a problem with. I think the arms are perfect, honestly. It's more about the knee cut. The knee and the, like, double-jointed knee are just, I don't know, you just have to, like, break it in or something, and it it's very stiff. Like, look at that. I can't even bend this knee, so, I don't know. Am I the only one that feels that way? This figure can pose around fantastic. It really can. It can pose around fine. There's no issues there. I'm pretty sure he's on ball joints. I can't really tell. Is that a ball joint? What the hell is that? Is that a new joint? What is this? I can't really tell. I don't really want to risk it. But, yeah, I mean, the, just the, the pinless joints are just annoying to me, personally. But, I don't know. I know a lot of people love them, and aesthetically, they look good. But, damn, they are they are way too stiff most of the time. Getting into some Chad Gable figure comparisons. Here we have his Then Now Forever Elite with a torso swap. And then we have his Elite 59 figure, I think it was, over here, with which is a great gear. This gold and American-style gear was really good. And he did change from the shorter boots, like we see on these two figures, to the longer boots. And I'm pretty sure... I have this figure stock, but this is kind of a fix-up I made when Shorty G was the thing, so I did put this torso in there, put the this basic head sculpt over here. So I've done a lot of surgery on this guy for sure, but I really like this new one, and I would like to see what this head sculpt looks like over here, because I think this looks really good, and I may do that on surgery. We'll have to play around with that and see, because I think this head sculpt could work over here as well, and I, I don't know. Like, obviously, this probably fits the gimmick right now, but I still like this head sculpt a lot more in terms of likeness. So you guys can see this is more of a serious face, and then you have the smiling face, and, I mean, they kind of look like two different guys, but at the same time, they both look like Chad Gable a lot to me, so I guess it's just pick your poison there, but I really like both of these. And then for some more Chad Gable figure comparisons, we have the new Elite 106 Chad Gable up next to our last two Otis figures. You have the Elite 76 version, and then you do have the Elite 86 version or Elite 87 version, I think. And both of them are really good. I like the Otis figures a lot. I liked them when they first released. They're very poseable. They feel good in hand. And we are getting another Otis Elite in Elite 107 that's going to match this Chad Gable. But if you wanted to see what this looks like, I mean, he kind of matches the old heavy machinery gear right here. So that's kind of crazy. Even though the new Otis will match, if you wanted to fit this in right now, you could use the heavy machinery Otis or the brand new Otis. And I think you could get away with fitting him in there for your or like updated current day shelf or modern shelf for your rosters and whatnot. But I'm I'm having a lot of fun with the Chad Gable. I just, damn, those pinless legs are very tight and they annoy the hell out of me. So for Paul Bearer's accessories, we get two different style urns and then we do get three pairs of interchangeable hands, which I like. I think this is a nice bonus right here. Now starting up first, we do have the smaller version of the urn. Now I'm pretty sure this is a brand new sculpt. I don't think we've ever seen this before with any Paul Bearer. So they did give us the smaller urn. Now on this individual urn, the top does not come off, but on the other one it does. I could have swore both of them came off, but I guess they don't. But this is very nice. This is kind of like your more, you know, this is probably the the urn that's more synonymous with Paul Bearer and The Undertaker. When you think of an urn, this is the style you would think of, I would say. Or at least me personally, I don't think of the bigger version. But this is very nice, and it's got a nice little heft to it, so this is a cool accessory obviously with, with Paul Bearer. And then we have the larger urn, which again does pop off right here, and you can hide things in here. I mean, you could put, I, I don't know what the hell, you can't really see down in there, but it's, I mean, there's significant space. You could put stuff down in there. Now, obviously you want to be careful with that, but you could fill it with water or something like that. I don't know if there's a hole in here, or if it would leak out, but you could definitely put stuff in here if you wanted to do so, but there's the cap. You can put the cap back on there. I'm probably going to put this into the GM's office or something like that. I think it would look nice as a nice vase or something like that, or I don't know, Finn Balor's ashes, or I don't know. We'll see about that, but the urn looks good. It's a very nice shape and size. Like, it's very big. It's very big compared to the other. It's almost double, triple the size almost, so very cool to get both size urns, and I don't remember when he had this specific urn versus this specific urn, but I'm sure somebody can let me know down in the comment section 
description below. Now, outside of that, you do get interchangeable hands, and for Paul Bearer, you do get these choke slamming style hands, but I mean, these are his, I guess these are technically his mic holding hands, but they're more of the choke slamming shape. You have the Undertaker or Randy Orton pose style hands, you know, for those like signature poses, so he can, you know, call the haunted or something like that. You know, you lay down, call the haunted, and bring a monster back from the graveyard. But you do have these entrance posey style hands. And then we do have our like throne sitting hands, is what I like to call these, you know. So if he were sitting on a throne, he'd be like sitting on the sides right here, grasping the sides of the chair. But these could also work for, you know, holding the urn like underneath it, you know, holding it like this, which is cool. Or, you know, like prayer style hands. So lots of lots of ways you can use these, but we've seen these with Daniel Bryan and other guys in the past. But that does it for your Paul Bearer accessories. So getting into the Paul Bearer, starting out with the head sculpt. Really like this head sculpt, man. This is a brand new sculpt, I'm pretty sure. You even have like the dark eye makeup around there, which really fits in, you know. And I think that I think they did a really good job. Oh my god, I almost knocked him on his face there, but I really like this head sculpt. Really like the likeness, like the hair sculpt, like the eye sculpt. When I think of Paul Bearer, I just think of old VHS tapes I used to watch. Me and my brother used to go to Blockbuster and rent old VHS tapes of old pay-per-views and old Undertaker and Paul Bearer footage and, 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 you know, just documentaries and things of that nature. And obviously, I've gotten to witness him on television at different times throughout my fandom. However, when I think of Paul Bearer, I think of, like, throwback Paul Bearer. And that's just how I think of the character for me personally. But I really like this figure. I like the head sculpt. I really like this new torso that we have going on here. And I know it's a bit dark, so I'm going to try and brighten it up a little bit here. But you do have this new jacket mold that's unflapped right here. I do not like that the, you know, the belt buckle is just kind of painted on there. How nice and how much detail would it add if they had a sculpted belt and sculpted crotch piece on there? I think that would have really added to the figure, but I understand it. I really like the tie going on right here. The pattern right here on the tie looks really clean as well. You do have like this kind of ultimate edition torso without butterfly joints, but it, I mean, you get a lot of, it, we're going to get into the articulation of it, obviously, but the collar looks really good. And they did a great job right here of painting the edges of the white shirt and black. So when you look at him from the side, you get that seamless look right there. Instead of seeing the white poke through, that's a very genius move. Huge shout out to Mattel for doing something like that. That's a very clean thing to do. And one thing that I will say about this figure is you guys can tell that obviously he has a very strong, big torso. But then when you look at the arms, I don't know, it's like the arms are super skinny compared to the torso and to the legs. So it's just kind of funny how skinny his arms are and how tight his cuffs and, and sleeves are compared to the largeness of the torso. So I don't really know what they could have done there. Maybe a new arm mold, but I guess they couldn't do that at this juncture. But these sleeves should definitely be more loose and not as tight. But that, I mean, that's kind of nitpicking probably, but it's certainly worth noting and, and pointing out. So it doesn't look bad. It just looks a little bit odd at times, but I really like the jacket and how it opens up right here. I think this is very nice. And again, you do have a new, this is all new right here. This torso's new, I'm pretty sure. The jacket mold. These arms are old, but these legs are brand new as well. And these are on ball joints with an upper thigh cut, a double jointed knee. And these don't have like shit cut but damn these legs are very poseable and these are pinless but why are these so clean like these legs are not near like modern pinless legs these are very smooth this is how every figure should feel so Mattel if you can make every fi every figure that's pinless feel this buttery smooth because this feels immaculate in hand this this is how a figure should feel from you that feels good it doesn't feel like it's gonna snap it feels very buttery smooth and, and nice but he does have his dress shoes in there and long baggy pants but standing back right here you guys can tell the arms Am I wrong? Like, the arms just look a little bit skinny, but it's not too bad. I still, oh my god. A man wants to, like, fall over on his back for some reason, but figure feels phenomenal in hand. Again, like I said, it feels very buttery smooth. The shoulders are smooth. The double-jointed arms are smooth. Diaphragm, joint. I think you're gonna get as much as you want out of this guy. Paul Bear is not over there doing freaking 450 splashes, you know what I mean? So I think you're gonna get nice posability out of this guy. I don't think you're gonna really have a problem with that. Nonetheless, let's get into some Paul Bear figure comparisons. So for a suited body comparison, guys, we do have the build a figure Paul Bearer on the left, but it is a custom Teddy Roosevelt right here. So this head sculpt is obviously not accurate, but this is the old Paul Bearer body mold. And you guys can see that this one I feel is way more accurate. It's a lot more hefty. I think it captures Paul Bearer a lot better to his likeness. And then we do have the Paul Heyman Elite from the Beast Incarnate 3 pack right here. And then we have the Brother Love Elite over here from the Legends line. And all of these are separate bodies, pretty sure. I think all three of them are different, or all four of them are actually different in their own ways. Now these may share the same leg mold, or all three of these may actually share the same leg mold, but this is completely new. The legs are new, the torso's new, all the different new stuff going on right here, but all of these have the exact same arms, so that's just what I'm saying. No matter how big the torso is, the arm size kind of remains the same. It kind of throws it off a little bit, but again, not the biggest deal, just something worth mentioning for sure, but I definitely like the new Paul Bearer up next to the old Paul Bearer body mold. This is kind of unbelievable that this was Paul Bearer, so this, this just looks so much better to me. This really is Paul Bearer. I think that they did a really good job of capturing that unique look of him, so 
this is a great comparison between all these suited bodies. And then for your pole bearer comparison with some different Undertaker figures, here's a bunch of different eras of Undertaker, different moments in time with Undertaker and Paul Bearer. And they're addressed to the gills just to see what all of these look like next to each other. You have the Ultimate Edition. You have the old Legends figure. I think it's Legends Series 9 or something here. You have the other Legends figure. or This is the Raw Anniversary 3 pack, I think, Undertaker. And then we have the Ultimate Edition Amazon exclusive Gobbledy Gooker and Undertaker 2 pack Undertaker over there. So it's just like, you know, pick your different era, pick your different version. But I also apologize. There's so much darkness on the screen that it's kind of playing around with the exposure and stuff like that. So I do apologize. But this Paul Bearer, I think, looks really good up next to all these Undertaker. And then for another figure comparison, here's the Ultimate Edition Kane up next to the Elite 106 Paul Bearer. And I think these look really awesome up next to each other as well. And of course, you know, maybe you could make a, a red jacket version or something. I don't know. You could customize that, play around with that. However, very nice to see Paul Bearer and Kane up next to each other. I think these scale pretty well as well. Paul Bearer may could be a, a touch shorter. The Kane could be a touch taller or something. But I think this works pretty damn good for Kane and Paul Bearer. But I think that pretty much wraps up our 2-in-1 WWE Elite Series 106 review on WWE Elite Series 106 Chad Gable and Paul Bearer. Man, I, I really do like these figures a lot. I like all the new additions here. This Chad Gable's a really nice update. I mean, it's been a while since we got his last figure. This is our first elite figure where it's got his like new shorter haircut. I know we did get a shorty G basic that was pretty good as you guys saw. Like that head sculpt's good. That may even look good on this body, you know, if you don't prefer the, the smiling head sculpt that comes on this figure. Chad Gable has a really good track record of really good figures though. Like every elite I've ever had of Chad Gable has been really fun. I've always been a big fan of his of his work anyway. So I'm excited to add the Chad Gable. I think it's great. Great attire. Looks really awesome. And I can't wait to pair the Otis with it in Elite Series 107. And then the Paul Bear figure is really awesome, man. The only thing that I'd really say about the gripes with that figure is, you know, with a figure that big, you're not going to get the most posability out of like an ab crunch situation, which isn't the biggest deal. And then I would say that these suited arms, they went with the same suited arms that they've went with for the last few suited figures. And I would just say that maybe this new suited, like larger torso looks a bit odd with like the super skinny tight knit sleeves. And that's like a kind of a nitpick, I guess you could say. Like it's not the biggest deal of all time, but it's certainly worth noting. Like obviously the pants are very baggy and they match the torso, but then the arms or what kind of, I don't know, it doesn't look bad look, like looking at the figure, but then when you really look at it and you take a closer look, you're like, yeah, that does kind of look a bit odd there, but not the biggest deal like I said, but it is certainly worth noting, but I like the head sculpt. I love the new body mold. I think it looks awesome up next to Taker and Kane. Really great figure. I think you guys are going to really enjoy this Paul Bearer, and again, we haven't seen a Paul Bearer figure in a really long time, so having this one is awesome to get an upgrade and stuff like that, and I really, I haven't had a Paul Bearer in my collection in a long time. I never found the Hall of Champions, the old Builder figure. I sold the head sculpt on pretty sure in favor of that custom and so you know this is awesome I'm, I'm ha very happy to have another Paul Bear because I really didn't have a definitive one in my collection so this is awesome for me as well so all good stuff right there really appreciate these figures but if you guys want to grab these figures you can do so over at ringside collectibles use code MD toys to save yourselves 10% now if you want to replace your old Paul Bear I think that's definitely something you want to do and with Chad Gable I think it's worth replacing your old Chad Gable unless you just don't have any you know if you have no pull in the game you don't really care about the updated roster or you don't really care about Chad Gable or whatever the case is. I mean, I guess you could you could completely skip over it, but I know a lot of flashback collectors are going to want that Paul Bearer, and anybody that's collecting modern day is definitely going to want this Chad Gable because it is the best Chad Gable that they've done so far, so that's definitely good with the addition of the double jointed arms and such. So I would highly recommend both. I like them both, and I think they're going to do pretty well in our ranking, but we won't know that until the end, obviously. However, that is pretty much going to wrap up the video, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Huge shout out to our patron members of the MDT YouTube channel. Always appreciate you fellas for your continued support on the channel. Thank you guys so very much for everything you do for me on a monthly basis. But I'm getting out of here, man. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I am getting the hell out. Subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video if you will. I'd greatly appreciate it. I'm getting out of here. I'll see you guys soon. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later.